All right, good morning, everyone. Um, this is not really, what I'm about to talk about is not really something that comes from Michael Huddleston. Uh, it's, it's just been my observation from tra trading the NASDAQ daily. Um, I'm going to put it in my ICT basics playlist, even though I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and warn you that this is not from him. This is from me. Uh, but you are talking to somebody who trades only the NASDAQ every single trading day. So I have some authority. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about compensating for variance on the NASDAQ specifically. Um, the NASDAQ is a more illiquid instrument than the S&P 500, and so you just get longer wicks. Um, you get more variance on the NASDAQ that really cannot be avoided. Um, I obviously prefer trading the NASDAQ uh, and have no intention of trading the ES, but at the same token, the NASDAQ comes with a little bit more pitfalls in terms of variance than the uh, ES does. So what do I mean by compensating for variance? So let's say that you're putting, oh, did I get, why would it not fail? Come on. There you go. I'll talk, I, I'll talk about that trade in, a, in the next video. Uh, yeah, so, all right, we did well with that. Um, okay, so compensating for variance, what do I mean by that? Guys, Whenever you put a stop in on the NASDAQ, you need to add a couple points above that swing higher, that swing lower, whatever you're using as your stop. You've got to add in one to two points. You, you just do. You have to compensate for the variance. Um, if you don't, you're going to find yourself really frustrated. Uh, the, the ES is more precise, so if you don't want to compensate for variance and you want to use very, very exact uh, stops, then I would recommend trading the ES. Uh, but of course, I don't think the S is, is, is as much fun. Okay, so let's say, for example, that you get short here on this, uh, the low of this order block on a limit order, right? Where would your stop go? Well, above that order block plus two points. That's what I'm saying. So I will add on two points now to all of my stops. So let's say that the high there is 658 spot 75, then my stop would be 660 spot 75. This is NASDAQ specific, guys. Uh, again, like I said, you're going to be much more precise on the ES. Um, but if you are trading the NASDAQ, you, you must add on a couple points to your stop, um, and you will find yourself a lot more pleased and, and not stopped out as often. Um, like, for example, let's say that you were, you, know, you were trying to get long down here and using that low as as your stopping point. That was exactly two points, so you probably would have been stopped out there. Um, maybe you should have used that candle instead, plus two points. Whatever you're using as your stop, guys, my recommendation to you, again, not financial advice, but just someone who day trades, just from someone who day trades the NASDAQ every trading day. Uh, the NASDAQ is just going to have wicks, guys. So frankly, I have to back off on being so aggressive with the break-even stops. Uh, and then number two, like let's say, for example, that you're trailing your stop up on these swings. because We just had a good low, low resistance liquidity run. It would be that, that black candle plus two points. That black candle plus two points. That black candle plus two points. And that's compensating for the variance on the NASDAQ. You're compensating for the illiquidity and the longer wicks on the NASDAQ. Um, you don't need to do that on the ES, in my opinion. Not that I trade the ES, but with the ES, you can put it exactly below these lows, and it should be pretty good to go. But with the NASDAQ, guys, you're going to find yourself, like, if you put it below that black candle, notice it comes down, like, three ticks, right? So two points below, you'd be still in the market, and one tick below, you'd be stopped out. So... Every time that you put a stop in the marketplace, guys, on the NASDAQ, just add a point, add two points, add two and a half points. Um, I understand that you're going to subject yourself to slippage. I understand the pitfalls of doing that. But I'm also telling you as somebody who's day trading the NASDAQ daily that uh, it is just more liquid and it does have more variance. And if you um, don't add in some compensation for that on your stops, you're going to find yourself pretty frustrated oftentimes. Uh, I've definitely found myself stopped out many times now where I'm trying to use very precise stops like Michael shows on his Twitter. I'm sorry guys, I'm just telling you from my experience you can't do that. You you have to you have to add on a couple points. I add on two points to every stop now. Um, 
and that's keeping me out of being stopped out prematurely for the most part. It might even have to be two and a half points, but right now I'm at two points. Or that's uh, two points or eight ticks. And if you add on eight ticks to every stop, you will find yourself being stopped out a lot less. Uh, and that's just the variance and the illiquidity that comes with the NASDAQ guys. So uh, in this video, I covered my opinion on compensating for variance on the NASDAQ by adding on two points uh, or eight ticks to every stop, whether it's the initial stop or the trailed stop. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to go over the trade that I took on a separate video. Bye-bye. Um,